All right, in this video, you'll see how it is that we actually uh, track data in OpenTrack. So first, we have to load a video. So you uh, click on load video, and then whatever file picker you have will pop up. Um, where am I going to get this? OK, I have some uh, old stuff where? Over here. I'm just going to grab video from here. It'll tell you uh, basically where it's putting that video. Click OK. In this case the frame rate is 210 frames per second. Uh, when you look at the lab uh, instructions you'll see what these video rates are. And then you'll see it. So this is a video of something that's going to go round and round and round. So just to keep it real simple uh, what I've got to do is I've got to decide what part of the video I want to track. So you know, I can, of course, see virtually any part of the video at all. You can use your arrow keys when you're on the scrubber up here to go back and forth. Um, I'm going to track a little bit of that. But you got to basically set where you want to start tracking from to uh, where you want to end tracking from. Okay. So if you don't set those two numbers, uh, generally, well, you'll, you'll have a problem. It won't work. Um, you also probably don't want to track the zeroth frame of data, so you want to go forward at least one. At this point, you hit continue. So you're always in OpenTrack going to see a go back and a continue button in virtually all screens that you get to. And the idea here is that, um, you know, you, you can basically navigate uh, and see very few options at a time. I, I know this might not look like very few options at a time, but uh, if you only see a few options compared to seeing hundreds of different things and menu choices, uh, hopefully you can stay on track a little bit better. So we'll hit continue. Now this next part is calibration. Uh, in this case I know that the calibration distance is 0 0.058 meters. So I just tabbed onto another field. So you put that in first, and then you click any on any other field. Um, and then what you got to do, the idea is there's something in your field of view that you know how big it is. In this case, it's the distance from the center of that marker to the center of that marker. If you're not exactly right, uh, it's OK. Uh, however, the more careful you are with these sorts of things, the better. So here, what this is basically saying, if I mouse over the X calibration constant, meters per pixel is automatically calculated when calibration endpoints are selected. So that's basically saying that uh, we have some pretty darn fine resolution here in that image. So uh, uh, less than a millimeter per pixel. All right, we'll hit continue. All right, now we get to add markers. There are three types of markers. There are regular markers that you will track, there are static markers that you will not track, but simply it's something you want to note on the image. And there are virtual markers, which are some combination of either regular or static markers. If uh, a marker has a mass, it may be a center of mass. Um, it may be just a geometric center between a couple of markers. So here, I'm going to add a virtual marker, or a virtual marker. I'm going to add a regular marker here. Let's call that one outer. It, it doesn't have a mass in this case, it's just a, a attached to a disk, and hit OK. You see the initial X and Y positions in the pixels there. This marker here, I'm going to call that inner, and let's make it a different color. And for reference, let's see, let's uh, put a um, center, we'll make that one a different color. And this one I'm going to make static. I don't really need to track that point. Uh, it's in the same place every time. And if I really want to, I can uh, create an x-axis. So, you know, if I think this is where it's level, maybe I'm going to put another static marker over here. Um, X-ref. I will make that one yet another color. All right. And that was static. Now, I want you to understand that anytime you are making a marker that needs to be tracked, that is a regular marker that is not static, it needs to basically be in a very white space. If it's not in a very white space, uh, you will have an issue. There, there is some work underway, although it hasn't been tested, of doing the 
exact opposite. So for example, if you have a white background and you have dark markers, um, but that is in testing phase at this point. So in theory, either light or dark. So now that I've added all the markers I want to do, um, I'm going to hit continue. It's going to ask me, what do I want to call the project? So the project is where all of your information is stored, your video, your uh, tracks, the setup of what your markers are called and where they live and things like that. So I'm going to just call this uh, example project. And then you'll see what I call alert noise. Uh, I err on the side as a developer on the side of showing users where everything lives. Um, so this is the directory. This is a Linux style directory which sort of looks like um, web. Um, in Windows you'd probably see something like C, um, documents and settings, my documents, whatever, uh, and then the rest of this. So everything here is going to live in open track data and then projects. So all the data will live in, in some kind of data, open track data projects directory within your home directory. All right, now that I'm here, there, there are some things that uh, really don't matter so much. They're tracking parameters, max, min. These are for another um, way of tracking. They are, they are largely deprecated. It's not to say that we'll never use them again, but um, under the setup tab, there are certain things that you can do for tracking. Uh, we're currently using a boundary fit method. If we use a moment fit or iterated moment fit, we need those radii. Don't mess with this. This is where you want it to be. Okay, so here, this on the other hand is something we do need to change. I seem to recall 15. Uh, this, if I expand the window out, you may or may not be able to see it as I'm moving. Search radius. Uh, actually, I think you can in this particular screen. Search radius. Uh, it will then say, all right, if this moves from, say, uh, right here to there. How many how many pixels on average do we expect a movement between frames and make sure we search within that distance. Um, open track is is thresholding the image which is to say it's changing it all to black and white and then looking for the white spots that are near where you have marked. Uh, and it uses previous marks to find future marks. So uh, if you have a giant jump in your data you may need to stop and do something manually. We're going to do this automatically right now, so use this auto track. So if you if your search radius is set about right, if your markers are about centered, and you see the colored dots, so for example if I start from here, uh, it's not going to track because I can't see the colored dots. I got to start from a, uh, a frame in which I can see the dots. I hit auto track, boom, and now if all goes well, it will go through and it'll track automatically. And this is really cool for those of you who might be web developers. This is all happening in JavaScript. So it goes on for a while. I didn't track a huge number of frames. If you are uh, on a system with hardware acceleration, it may go quite a lot faster than this. Okay, and we're done. So once you finish tracking, this by the way is whenever you load tracks, you're going to end up in this particular screen uh, wherein you can continue to track or do other things. At this point, we're going to continue. All right, what do you want to call it? You can call it, th this is the name of the data file, P2D, Path2D. This has a uh, marker name, the uh, time, the X and the Y position. In it, so it's a file that can be opened up in a uh, text editor in a spreadsheet if you want to. It's tab delimited. So I'll just call this uh, ro rotary motion. You can call it whatever you'd like. It tells me where it puts it. So open track. So this is my home directory, home Tim. Open track data projects, and it's an example project, and all that data is stored right there if I ever need to find it. All right. So now. I can do some plotting and some other cool stuff. Now, at this point, uh, when you click on the Graphs tab, you'll see a whole bunch of things selected. Now, observe, I hit Clear, nothing happens. Uh, really, nothing is going to happen until I select what I want to plot. So, for example, 
Here's my outer and inner markers. Uh, let's say that I want to not plot anything now we're clear. Let's plot their x and their y positions because they're going to vary. It should look pretty sinusoidal. So if I hit plot, boom, whenever a new file is created, you're always told where it lives. And that's basically what it looks like. Well, there's a little bit of jaggedness at a couple of places, but it's not too bad. Um, so x position, there's the y position, and uh, so it's relatively straightforward. Now, um, what I will do in a uh, future video is show you how to create links and then how to create angles. And we'll probably start with the same data just so that you get a sense of uh, what to do. All right. And there's your main again. Um, by the way, you also have a, uh, you can look at the video. You can always access this stuff by right clicking on the video and uh, hitting play. So this is an embedded video player that you can use. There are a lot, a lot of things. So a lot of other things I need to go over, but that's the key for tracking. Your data is saved at this point.